the pals that you make here are lifelong and uh, will do anything for you. It's amazing the, uh, the caliber of people that we have here at the Academy. It's really been a privilege. Every time and place in history has an echo. In this valley, in the shadow of Pikes Peak and the Rocky Mountains, you can almost hear the chants of the Ute and the Arapaho, of the Cheyenne and Kiowa, of the Comanche, Sioux, and Apache. Or the bugle call of the U.S. Cavalry. the creaking of wagon trains, the groaning of herds of cattle, the sounds of warriors and explorers, of fur traders and soldiers, of cattlemen and settlers that are so much a part of history past. Now mingle with sounds of history present, the voices of young men and women reaching for the stars. The United States Air Force Academy Cadet Honor Guard. For today, this valley and these mountains echo with the sounds of the United States Air Force Academy. This is a very special morning. For some 900 cadets, it is the end of the beginning. The end of four years of discipline, hard work, and study. It is graduation day. In a few hours, they will receive their Bachelor of Science degree and be commissioned as a second lieutenant in the United States Air Force. Family, friends, and classmates can all be proud of their achievement. So too, the faculty who have guided, taught, and molded the young men and women into leaders and Air Force officers. For the graduates, it has not been easy to reach this day. There have been many hurdles, many challenges, and many reasons to quit, because that was the way it was meant to be, from the very beginning. The dream of an Air Force Academy can be traced as far back as World War I and the dawn of military air power. Back then, America's pioneer aviators saw the need for an academy to prepare military officers for the new air service. One of the most vocal advocates was General William Billy Mitchell, who tried in vain to persuade the U.S. government to establish such a school. The dream did not become reality until the United States Air Force became a separate military service in 1947, and President Dwight D. Eisenhower signed the bill authorizing the academy in April 1954. Over 580 sites in 45 different states were considered by the Air Force. The site finally chosen was some 18,000 acres of wild ranch land at the base of the Rampart Range, just north of Colorado Springs, Colorado. Planning and construction of the $142 million facility began in the summer of 1955. Meanwhile, in July 1955, the first academy class, the class of 1959, some 306 cadets, was selected and activated at Lowry Air Force Base outside Denver, Colorado. During those years at Lowry, many of the academy's traditions were established. Cadet uniforms were designed. Military discipline became a way of life. The Falcon was chosen as the academy mascot and the first class crest and ring were designed. In August 1958, the cadet wing moved from Lowry Air Force Base to its permanent home in Colorado Springs. In June 1959, the U.S. Air Force Academy graduated its very first class, 207 cadets. Five years later, in 1964, to meet the growing needs of the Air Force, President Lyndon B. Johnson signed a bill that authorized the Academy to expand its enrollment. The cadet wing grew from 2,529 cadets to its present strength of 4,417 cadets, the same at West Point and Annapolis. In June 1976, for the very first time, 
women were appointed to the academy. Today, women represent about 12% of the cadet wing. There is much to see and learn here. In fact, the Academy is one of the leading tourist attractions in Colorado. We begin our tour here at the Barry Goldwater Air Force Academy Visitor Center, the gateway to the Academy. Opened in June 1986, the Visitor Center was built with funds donated by private individuals and organizations. Inside are a variety of exhibits, a 250-seat theater, a snack bar, and a gift shop. The comprehensive exhibits feature video and static displays on the history of the academy, on life as an Air Force cadet. There is even a model of a cadet room and an hour-by-hour -hour description of a typical cadet day. The visitor center is the perfect place for cadets themselves to meet family and friends for a personal and escorted tour. But most visitors, armed with an informative, self-guided tour map, simply head up the one-third mile wooded trail that takes them from the visitor center to the academy grounds. First stop, this overlook, where one gets the first full view of the Air Force Academy. The cadet area, some 80 acres, consists of dormitories, classrooms, the library, mess hall, and chapel, all grouped on three terraced levels. The first level is known as the Honor Level. It includes Harmon Hall, the administration building, named for Lieutenant General Hubert R. Harmon, the first superintendent of the academy, Arnold Hall, the Cadet Social Center, and the world-renowned multi-faith Cadet Chapel. The Cadet Chapel is the centerpiece of the academy, both spiritually as well as architecturally. Five years in the planning and four years in construction, the Cadet Chapel rises 150 feet towards the Colorado sky. The 17 spires are made of aluminum, glass, and steel, and reflect the light inwardly as well as outwardly. Inside, there is a separate chapel for each of the three major faiths represented in the Air Force, Protestant, Catholic, and Jewish. There is also an all-faiths room for cadets of other faiths. All furnishings in the chapels, including two massive pipe organs, were presented as gifts or purchased with donations from Air Force bases around the world. The second level is the cadet level, also known as the terrazzo. This is where the cadets live, eat, and study. This is Vandenberg Hall. It is the original cadet dormitory. At one quarter mile, it is the longest dormitory in the world. It houses 24 cadet squadrons, some 2,640 cadets. Directly across the terrazzo is Saijan Hall, which houses an additional 16 cadet squadrons. This dormitory was named for Captain Lance Saijan, class of 1965, the first academy graduate to win the Medal of Honor. Both dormitories, by the way, are co-ed. Directly east is Fairchild Hall, the academic building. It contains 305 classrooms designed for highly interactive classes of 20 students or fewer, 20 lecture halls, 45 science labs, most faculty offices, and the Academy's 600,000 volume library. The library provides cadets and faculty alike a quiet place to read and study or to do research using books, periodicals, newspapers, or computers. This beautiful marble staircase spirals up through four floors of the library. It leads to special collections in the library, the most famous of which is Colonel Richard Gimbel's Aeronautical Library. This priceless collection of rare books, lithographs, and aviation artifacts chronicles the development of man's desire to fly and the history of flight. This is the Noon Formation. During this ceremony, the entire cadet wing assembles on the terrazzo and then marches into Mitchell Hall for lunch. Covering more than 1.7 acres, Mitchell Hall, named for Brigadier General Billy Mitchell, is the world's largest dining hall. More than 4 million meals and 90,000 box lunches are prepared here each year. The 
third and lower level is used for support services and street traffic. Nearby are the planetarium, an observatory, the physical education facilities, the parade grounds, and a number of displays and memorials, some the gifts of past academy classes, that memorialize Air Force aviators. On the four corners of the terrazzo itself, you can see four fighter bombers, an F-102 Starfighter, an F-4 Phantom, an F-105 Thunder Chief, and an F-16 Fighting Falcon. This beautiful bronze on the plaza of the honor level is dedicated to the memory of military flyers who served overseas during World War I. And just to the right is this memorial honoring the World War II fighter pilots who had graduated from the Tuskegee Institute in Tuskegee, Alabama. On the hill overlooking the Cadet Chapel and the Academy grounds is the American Legion Monument dedicated to all American veterans, both men and women. Not far from the cadet area on Stadium Boulevard, you'll find this B-52 bomber on display. For more than 30 years, the B-52 has been the backbone of America's manned bomber force. This particular B-52, 083, flew over 200 combat missions over North and South Vietnam. This bomber has the added honor of being one of only two B-52s to have shot down a North Vietnamese MiG in aerial combat during the Vietnam War. Just up the road on Stadium Boulevard is Falcon Stadium, home of the Falcons, the U.S. Air Force Academy football team, and the site of Academy graduations. And finally, just beyond the stadium, is Thunderbird Overlook, nearby the Academy airfield, where future Air Force officers learn the basics of flying. Since its inception, the mission of the Air Force Academy has been to provide instruction and experience to all cadets so that they graduate with the knowledge and character essential to leadership and with the motivation to become career officers in the United States Air Force. Each year, more than 12,000 high school students apply for admission to the academy, but only about 1,400 gain appointment. But before this, new cadets arrive in mid-June for basic cadet training known as BCT. BCT, taught mostly by upperclassmen, is five weeks of summer boot camp. First, the would-be cadets are taught military drill and bearing, and the customs, courtesies, and heritage of the Air Force. Training then shifts to a rugged area of Rocky Mountain wilderness known as Jack's Valley. Here, the cadets are put through a rigorous program of physical development and exercises designed to build confidence, teamwork, and spirit. BCT is a time of decision for both the school and the would-be cadets. Many cadets wash out, while others, for whatever reason, simply decide to quit. Those who complete basic cadet training are awarded their cadet shoulder boards, signifying their acceptance as members of the cadet wing. We will not lie, steal, or cheat, nor tolerate among us anyone who does. The honor code is the heart and soul of cadet life, the minimum standard of conduct that the cadets expect of themselves and their classmates. Living under the honor code is a vital part of cadet development. As you leave the academy, you answer your nation's call to advance the cause of freedom, to lead. And there's a new sense of pride and patriotism in our land, and it's good for our nation's soul. Students apply for an appointment to the Air Force Academy for a variety of reasons. Some want to fly. Some want a career in the military. But they all want a good education. At the Air Force Academy, they get a superb education. For four years, the life of every cadet focuses on four areas of study and achievement, known as the four pillars of excellence. They are academics, military training, athletics, and character development. During the academic year, from September to June, most of a cadet's time is spent in the classroom, 
Each cadet carries between 21 and 25 credit hours, chosen from a core curriculum that every cadet must complete. The thing I like best about going to the academy is the opportunities we get to do here. I mean, where else can you go and take programs like jumping and soaring in T-41 and plus get the education that you get here? I mean, it's one of a kind place. Besides the core curriculum, cadets also select between 15 and 18 additional courses from 25 possible academic majors. More than half the cadets, however, major in engineering or basic sciences. Honor programs are also offered. The academic faculty consists almost entirely of Air Force officers, all of which have earned a master's or doctorate degree. Not only are the officers challenging instructors, but they also serve as role models for the cadets and bring to the classroom a broad working knowledge of today's Air Force. Because while the academy is very much like a civilian university, it is, above all else, a military organization. Cadets begin as followers, studying military leadership their first two years. Duallys, for example, must follow a rigid discipline that includes walking only on designated paths. Finally, as upperclassmen, Cadets apply what they have learned by assuming command positions in the cadet wing. The objective of professional military training, PMT for short, is to produce academy graduates who understand the lessons to be learned from man's history of armed conflict, and in particular, its application to modern air power. Instruction ranges from Air Force heritage to the traditional drill and ceremonies. A big part of the cadets' military training is flying. Even those cadets who don't plan to become pilots or navigators after graduation are required to learn the basic skills of airmanship as part of their core curriculum. All fourth class cadets complete T-43 navigation and T-37 flight simulation courses. All third class cadets are required to complete a course in soaring using both powered and unpowered gliders. Soaring is taught by upper-class cadets who have earned their instructor status. Every cadet has the chance to learn the fundamentals of flight and to solo in a sailplane. Senior cadets who want to be Air Force pilots must successfully complete the T-41 course, which includes dual and solo instruction in a modified Cessna 172. For the more adventurous cadets, the Academy offers a basic free-fall parachute course. After 40 hours of ground instruction and five free-fall jumps, a cadet earns his or her parachute wings. Finally, a lot of a cadet's military training happens during the summer. While some cadets are on three weeks vacation, others are leading new appointees through their basic cadet training. The goal of the Academy's athletic program is to improve a cadet's physical fitness, to teach athletic skills, and to develop leadership qualities. To reach that goal, all cadets are required to participate in physical education classes and to play either intramural or intercollegiate sports for the entire four years they're at the Academy. With over 4,000 active and gung-ho cadets, the Academy has developed one of the most comprehensive sports programs and some of the largest and most varied athletic facilities in the country. Most physical education classes, for example, are conducted in either the Cadet Gymnasium or the Cadet Fieldhouse, two facilities in which cadets spend a lot of their free time. This one and a half million square foot building contains three gymnasiums and facilities offering boxing, gymnastics, wrestling, weightlifting, a rifle and pistol range, indoor tennis, and more than 30 courts for racquetball, handball, and squash. Also in the gymnasium are two pools, one built to Olympic specifications, that are used for competition, recreation, and water survival training. 
The field house, which is open to the public, offers a 6,600-seat basketball arena, site of all Falcon home games, an ice arena for hockey and skating, and a multi-purpose area the size of a football field, surrounded by a one-sixth mile track, all under one roof. Most outdoor sports are played on the Academy's 143 acres of athletic fields, which include 42 intramural fields, five intercollegiate football fields, two intercollegiate soccer fields, two baseball fields, two softball fields, a 400-meter outdoor track, and fields with artificial turf for football, soccer, and lacrosse. There's enough space here for half the cadet wing to participate in intramural sports at the same time. The Academy's best athletes compete in intercollegiate sports on a national level. This is where the Air Force plays its home games, Falcon Stadium. Situated at the foot of the Rampart Range, this 52,000 seat stadium combines breathtaking scenery with spine-tingling sport. Adding to the excitement of every home game is the pre-kickoff performance by the Wings of Blue, the Academy's crack parachuting team. Members of the class of 1959 chose the Falcon as the school mascot because of its speed, power, grace, aggressiveness, and fearless courage qualities that best characterized the combat role of the U.S. Air Force. Whether it's Army or Navy, there's nothing like the thrill of playing football at 7,000 feet above sea level. With a dedicated athletic staff that includes Olympians, national champions, and All-Americans, it's not surprising to learn that in the Academy's brief history, more than 230 cadets such as Chad Hennings, selected in 1987 as the outstanding lineman in college football, 1,500-meter indoor track champion Jill Wood, two-time Olympic gold medalist Alonzo Babers, and Raymond Dudley, the Air Force's all-time leading basketball scorer, have also earned All-American honors. From earning honors to being on your honor, The nature of the military profession demands that an officer have high ethical standards. Such standards of ethics and personal conduct are learned and perfected by cadets. Finally, a cadet's spiritual development is both encouraged and enhanced by the many voluntary religious programs available at the cadet chapel. Despite their heavy academic, athletic, and military responsibilities, Cadets somehow still manage to crowd a lot of extracurricular activities into off-duty hours. Of course, there's always sports, but there's also Arnold Hall, the center of cadet social and recreational activities. It contains a 2,900-seat theater, a ballroom, a disco, game rooms, and a snack bar. Graduation itself is held in Falcon Stadium on the first Wednesday after Memorial Day. For the graduating seniors, it means one last parade with the full cadet wing. Every year, more than 30,000 visitors attend the colorful ceremony. Between basic cadet training and graduation, there have been four tough years of challenge, commitment, study, and discipline. But they have also been years of fellowship and personal discovery, of responsibility and leadership, of achievement and maturity. Where there once stood only a scared and confused dually, there now stands an Air Force cadet about to become an Air Force officer. Do each of you, having been appointed a second lieutenant, United States Air Force, solemnly swear that you will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that you will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that you take this obligation freely, without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, and that you will well and faithfully discharge the duties 
of the office upon which you are about to enter. So help you God. You. Ladies and gentlemen, you are dismissed. <laughs> With their Bachelor of Science degrees and their second lieutenant commissions in their hands, these new gold bars are now obligated to serve at least five years on active duty with the regular Air Force, eight years for navigator training, or nine years for pilot training. More than 65% of graduating cadets who qualify enter pilot or navigator training programs. In a few weeks, these former Air Force cadets will be scattered to schools and duty assignments around the world. And while the Air Force Academy does not offer graduate study, an average of 20 cadets each year earn prestigious postgraduate scholarships. But that's all in the future. For now, there is still time for celebrations, for posing pictures, and for fond farewells. And of course, the Air Force Thunderbirds. Since 1959, the United States Air Force Academy has graduated more than 22,000 young men and women. They have made history and been a part of history. Academy graduates have piloted America's space shuttle, become combat aces and astronauts, scientists and scholars, won the Medal of Honor for gallantry and heroism, and given their lives for their country. Today, the Academy continues its commitment to excellence and to fulfill its vital mission to train cadets to become Air Force officers dedicated to the defense of the United States of America. Every time and place in history has an echo.